The Palestinians claim to be the indigenous people of what's uh, referred to as Palestine in the modern vernacular and, and, and claim that the Jews are, are, don't have right to the land. What has your experience been? Well, it's a patently ridiculous claim because they're basically claiming that they became indigenous through conquering an indigenous people. I mean, when you study the history, you know right away that the Palestinians, I mean, even the word Palestine, like, it comes from the word Peleset, which means invader from the sea. I mean, even their own word tells you that they're, that's not where they're from. So, I mean, for them to make a claim that they're indigenous and then to deny that the Jewish people are indigenous is ridiculous because the Jewish people have the best claim in the region to being indigenous. And what constitutes that claim? So, when I explain it to young people, I explain it, uh, I call it the hand theory. So, if you think of your indigenous identity as a hand, so you have, you have your tradition, you have cultures, you have language, you have cuisine, and you have blood. Now, when you put all of those things together, you have what constitutes indigenous status. If the Jews are indigenous, why does the rest of the world think that the Palestinians are indigenous? Because for 40 years, one side's been spreading the narrative and one side has had almost exclusive access to everybody else. So they make a claim that's on the face of it is patently ridiculous, but unfortunately it gets believed because it's the only narrative being put out there. So if the uh, Indians were, are, are now recognized as indigenous to the land and, and have been given uh, reservations uh, uh, to which they have sovereignty, the Jews returning to what was their sovereign land from the, the time of the Old Testament, returning to that land, um, would you consider the modern state of Israel an, in, an indigenous country? Absolutely. See, the thing is, b both our peoples have a very similar experience with having treaties that were made with white people and then having those treaties broken. So if you take a look at what's happened to the Jewish people, they had treaties where they were actually granted a homeland on their ancestral lands, but then they slowly whittled those down until it became what is left which has become the modern state of Israel. And now, so Israel absolutely is an indigenous state. The problem is that it's a, the treaties that were gr granting you Israel, according to you know the white way of looking at the world, they were broken. So you had to fight for your land and you actually achieved independence. So these people on the left who are uh, uh, empathizing with the uh, Palestinians as having been colonialized, what do you say to them? Well, well, see, the problem with that whole line of thought is that you're, you're saying that the people that conquered Jewish people and, and took the land away from them a couple hundred years ago are now indigenous, and so when there's a return of actual indigenous people that that becomes colonization. That's ridiculous. It's, it's a return of the original indigenous people to their ancestral homeland that, by definition, can't be colonization. And how well does this go over with your uh, multicultural friends uh, throughout the world? Well, to be quite honest, a lot of native people actually understand because we can, we can see the history and once we actually pay attention and we read the history thoroughly, we can see the parallels. But the problem is that a lot of people, especially on the social justice side, they, you know, they're not really paying attention. They just, they get very dogmatic. So they hear these ideas that, oh, the Palestinians are, are Arabs and the Arabs are indigenous to everywhere. But they forget that indigenous status is tied to a very specific place. So my, my indigenous status is to the Red River. I'm not indigenous to British Columbia or the Yukon or Northwest Territories. I'm indigenous to the Red River. And so we have, to, we have to hold Arab people to the same standard. They're indigenous to the Hejaz, the Arabian Peninsula. They're not indigenous to Iraq. They're not indigenous to Israel. They're not indigenous to those different areas. They, they actually took other people's land to live there. Um, when you... Uh when you talk about this with uh, people who consider themselves uh, multicultural and, 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 uh, and, and wanting to return indigenous peoples, uh, what sort of reactions do you get? Well, it's interesting because other indigenous people, when I start talking about, you know, basically cultural resurgence and, you know, re regaining your language and going back to your indigenous spirituality, those people are a lot more open to the argument because they understand that, you know, Islam and Arabization happened across the Middle East. So they understand the struggle to regain what is rightfully theirs, and they're much more open to the argument. And unfortunately, it's, it's the other people are not. So th this idea of, uh, of the Jews occupying the West Bank of Palestine... Yeah, okay, so that, that's patently ridiculous. The, the ancestral heartland of the Jewish people is actually what is commonly known as the West Bank. It's Judea and Samaria. If you look at the actual stories in the Bible, like you look at the stories that make Jews Jewish, all of those stories happened in those areas. I mean, you go to places like Beit El, you go to Shiloh. I mean, these are the places when you look at the genesis of the Israeli people, the Jewish people, 
you can see that this is where it happened. It didn't happen in Tel Aviv, right? Uh, Jerusalem, people talk about the green lines all the time, but one of the most important places in Jerusalem is over what they call the green line. So technically, if you go back to 67 borders, you would have no access to your holiest place. You couldn't go to the Western Wall. How would this new information, how can people accept it and, and, and essentially swim upstream against what's, what's uh, conventional wisdom you're saying is, uh, is the is reality? How would you people uh, encourage people to view this? What I always try to tell people is you need, you need to pay attention. You need to actually look into these things. Don't just take people's word for things. So when I went to Israel, the first thing I did was contact some people from over the green line because I wanted to see for myself. I wanted to see Shiloh. I wanted to see the, the West Bank, but I wanted, to, I wanted to talk to the people there. And when you talk to the people there, even the other side, you realize right away, like when I go on the, the Palestinian website for tourism and they talk about their two million years of history, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that maybe they're not telling the truth.